What is going on, my friend, my friends, plural. It's going to have more than one people. It's not just going to be my mom watching the show this morning. Hopefully, we have some other guests here on. Uh, my friends, this is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. As you guys can see from the topic, uh, we have a full-time data engineer. Okay, His name is Caleb, and uh, I'm going to bring him on, and he's going to talk about his journey. He's going to talk about uh, what's working for him and why he moved from Amazon FBA to affiliate marketing. With that being said, it's his story. I don't want to tell it. I'll let him tell it. Welcome to the show, Caleb Wiles. What's up, brother? Dave, how are you? Good, man. Good. Good. Are you coming? Uh, f- oh, get, I, I'd guess the state, but that'd take too, too long. Where are you calling in from? I'm just outside of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Okay. I was going to, I was going to guess maybe uh, throw in Indiana out there or something, but uh, that's probably because my uncle from Indiana just visited us. So um, cool. I love Nashville. I love Tennessee. Um, uh, Is that where you were born and raised? I was until I was about 14 and my family picked up and we moved to Hawaii for about 10 years, but I ended up coming back and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm from Tennessee. It's my home. So I came back and went to school here and just made a home here. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're a, uh, full-time data engineer that just the, I mean, that's way over my pay grade, man. <laughs> I don't even, can't even fathom what you, what you're doing, coding, do figuring really, you know, high level stuff out. That's what the hell uh, you know, attracted you to even start looking for these side hustles, internet businesses, uh, event, you know, first starting out with Amazon FBA, what, what kind of te- give us a little bit of context on your backstory. Well, it's crazy because it started probably back in the late nineties, believe it or not. Um, I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit in me. Um, even as a teenager, um, my dad, it started with my dad wanting me to list some golf clubs on eBay for him. And that was probably 1998, I think. And, you know, I came up in an era where the kids kind of knew more than the parents about technology. And uh, yeah. he was like, hey, I know you know how to take pictures and do stuff online. So can you post this for me? And when I, I saw you could make money online without having me having to go to my grocery store job, it kind of it flipped a switch in me really young. Um, yeah. So from then on, um, I ended up not even going to college right out of high school because my whole thing was I'm going to build a business. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to do that. So when all my friends went off to college, I went to work. I started in construction, worked on a cattle farm, uh, things like that to get build up capital. Um, And um, I ended up actually 21. I opened a a produce market in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and my brother in law was a farmer. And he said, hey, I know you want to start a business. I don't know anything about that. And I didn't either. But he said, I think you've got the brains to do it. And so I said, let's do it. And uh, that was kind of the time of the economic downturn back in the uh, 2005, 2004. So we we were open for about a year. uh, And I learned a lot. But I ended up closing shop and and ended up going to college eventually. So. Hey, nice, nice. Uh, that's 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 interesting. A lot of different, a lot of different um, kind of more physical, right? Brick and right. mortar, physical yes. labor style businesses. So um, w- we titled this, of course, you know how you w- how or why. I like to start out with why you went from Amazon now to affiliate marketing. Um, talk to us about sort of that transition. What, what, what initially got you into doing Amazon FBA and why now are you transitioning away from that and into affiliate marketing? Absolutely. Um, you know, it really started with, like you said, the brick and mortar. I realized I was working six, seven days a week and I had to physically be there to make money. Now I could eventually brought on some employees, um, like most businesses do. Right. But, um, I started looking at things online because I knew that was the future. And I found Amazon FBA. Um, I started off in retail arbitrage. So I was going around to Walgreens and Walmart and finding these deals and putting them out there. And I had a ton of fun doing that. Uh, but I quickly realized I had to be on the road. I had to be, I had to be finding these deals every day. And it didn't really make sense to me. Um, you know, at that time I was reading 
I was reading the four hour work week and that's when the, <laughs> the switch flipped. I was like, man, I'm going to be working until I die. I mean, this is fun. It's cool. But um, so then I, I transitioned into private label. Um, I created my own product. Um, so I kind of made that next step, I felt like. Yeah. Um, uh, but even then, um, I realized everything that went into that and everything I would have to be keeping up with. Um, and so I kind of fell into affiliate marketing and I saw the power of that. And, you know, that's where I am today. Um, I actually started in 2017 for the first time. I was just kind of piddling around and I made a few bucks and I said, this is so powerful. Um, mm. it's amazing. Um, but I got married and I had a kid and things kind of fell off. And yeah. so I've looked back now and I'm like, I got to get back into that. It makes so much sense to me and it's fun. And, um, I think I can make something out of that. So what, what, um, specifically is attractive to you in, 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 in the business model of affiliate marketing versus, uh, something like Amazon where, uh, is it the is it the fact that um, selling information products has much higher profit margins? Is it the fact that you you don't you want to just run the marketing side of the business? You don't want to do everything else that that would be required if you were uh, Amazon. Of course, you're doing everything. You know, you're doing um, you're doing uh, customer support and in you know just kind of the full the full gamut in the business, but. Um, but, but if you were to create your own course or coaching program, you would sort of be doing that as well, right? You would be doing customer service. And that's why we recommend people start with affiliate marketing and then go from there. Um, so what is it about, I mean, I know what it is for me and I'm happy to share that my perspective here. Uh, but I, but you're the one who's made that transition. So what specifically about affiliate marketing, the business model is attractive to you? versus these other things that you've done before, for example, the Amazon stuff? Um, I think when when I had my private label business, I kicked off probably a year before COVID hit. Yeah. And um, I started to see all the, the problems that came with that. My suppliers were overseas um, the, with the physical product. Um, I, yeah. I, I ran into those issues. Gotcha. Um, and also, one thing that bothered me a lot, just personally, was the liability that came along with having a physical product. Uh, um, right. my, my brother, my older brother is an attorney, and we got into this, and he was like, hey, man, I want you to be covered. I want you to be um, yeah. have every, all your bases covered. And that, that kind of kept me up at night sometimes, even though I felt like I had that in place. Um, I personally don't really want that liability. I'd rather someone else worry about that. Um, and I also found that I really, like you were saying, I love the marketing part of, of when I was doing it, that was the most fun to me, building the websites, putting out there, doing the social media stuff. And yeah. I realized that's where I excelled and that's what I enjoyed the most. Um, so affiliate marketing was just that I, when I, I understood it, uh, it made the most sense for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 cool. Um, I, I, I want to take it a step further for all of you guys who are new and who are kind of learning the 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 idea of, you know, kind of validating a business model, right? So, um, so this is a, this is a, a section that's actually taken from the new affiliate marketing business blueprint. Um, but, uh, but I'll, I'll go over it with you. There's a, there's a section in there called the fishing formula, and it's essentially all about finding, you're uh, building an entire campaign from start to finish. Uh, I'll show you kind of what it looks like, the fishing formula in a nutshell. Um, it it kind of looks like it kind of looks like this. You can see my screen, right, Caleb? Yes, I can. And it starts out over with your species. You've if you've kind of I don't know if you've done any fishing up in in uh, in Tennessee. Have you? Maybe yes, in any... a lot. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. So you would understand this. So you know when you go out fishing, you want to target a species, right? It's 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 smart to know what you're going to be targeting before you go out, right? Yeah. Because that way you can bring you can go to the right water, you can go to the right place, you know where they hang out, you can you can chum the waters if that's possible, right? I know when we go fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, we drop chum down in the water and it starts bringing the fish, get some fired up down there. And then when we throw down the bay, that's the real food 
It's not just kind of stuff that's floating in the water that smells good and they, and they hammer that. Right. right. It, it's like, it's like blood. It's like putting blood in the water to bring sharks to the boat. Right. So, and then it, and then it moves on. I won't go through all these pieces, but it's an eight step process that makes it really simple. This is a, this is a kind of a 30,000 foot view of what the fishing formula is, but it's a direct response marketing system for affiliates. And in the, the, the affiliate marketing business blueprint training for all of you guys who are wondering, you know, what, what's in there? Well, this is a very small section that explains each one of these, each one of these eight steps, exactly what you need to be thinking about uh, and exactly how to make sure you do each step right. So I'm going to fast forward to this one particular part, which is kind of a couple of questions that you can ask yourself when you're thinking about who your target species is or who your target customer is. And there's this Jay Abraham qu quote or philosophy that there's only three ways to grow any business. And Jay Abraham's kind of a, a legendary direct response marketer, copywriter, business strategist. And he says that the only three ways to build a business are to get new customers, get, uh, do higher, uh, you know, b purchase or ticket price business with those customers, i.e. sell high ticket products or, and do repeat business. So those are the three ways to make money in a business. And so if you don't have all three of those things covered in any business, say, for example, the only way for you to grow that business is to just get new customers, you know, which a lot of these e-commerce businesses, Caleb, where you're selling dog bowls or you're selling, um, you know, phone cases or whatever, uh, you know, the, the number one way to grow that business is to just get new customers. You may be able to do repeat business with them, but it's not likely, right? Because right. you don't have brand recognition, right? So it's not like they're going to come back unless you've got really good email follow-up game, in which case that might be the second way that you can build an Amazon or a physical product e-commerce business. But the, the thing that makes affiliate marketing specifically selling information products so exciting is that you can not only get new customers, you can do repeat business with those customers by selling them subscriptions, or you can sell them memberships to different um, information clubs or ongoing newsletters or stuff like that, but you can also sell high ticket products. So selling information or being an affiliate of selling information products covers all three of those bases. And that's why I've always loved information marketing, selling education and starting out as an affiliate and then having the option if I want to scale to selling my own courses, coaching or events or virtual events now that COVID has kind of changed the game, then I can, I can do that. But I still can reap the benefits of making sure I check all three of those boxes even as an affiliate. So that's sort of my reasoning why I love information marketing and in combining that with affiliate marketing what comes up for you as you sort of see that philosophy or uh, and maybe you've heard it before from me me say it in the challenge or whatever absolutely and you know looking back at my my physical product i'm like what three of those did i have and it's maybe <laughs> one i don't know um yeah. you know my it retailed for uh 24 dollars and once i learned what high ticket meant uh, you know an offer like that 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 changed my mindset completely um, yeah. and then also the follow-up things that you're talking about, um, repeat customers wasn't really a thing for what I was selling. They, they might've bought three at a time, but I'd probably never see them again unless they, they told their cousin about it or bought one for them for Christmas. And, um, you know, that's a completely different shift in, um, my way of thinking about doing business online. When, when I went through the course, um, the 15 day challenge, uh, you know, that hit me hard. Because yeah. I was like, man, I was not doing these things, and um, th that's that's where it's at. That's where your your bread and butter is, and um, I completely shifted my my thought process. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, for those of you who are excited about this, you know, it's easy to get excited about something because maybe you, the marketing's good, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there's all kinds of people who are selling e-commerce courses and FBA Amazon courses and all that and and then and then the pitch is hey I mean 
you know, it's so easy. Anybody can sell a dog bowl or you launch a Facebook ad. And that's cool. Like that may even be possible that you can sell a product on the front end and make some sales. But the question is, is what next? Where do you go from there? Is there real potential long term for an average person to really make money in that business model? And the, the answer to that question is, it's very, it's even more unlikely than it is selling information. I'm not saying everybody succeeds with selling information and doing affiliate marketing because most people who buy any how to information get no results because they do nothing with it. Right. But the point is, is that it's, I, you know, I got to look at, I got to look at, do, you know, do, Am I, is it realistic for me to be like Amazon? And Amazon makes a small percentage off of hundreds of thousands of purchases per minute or hour. And for me, I, I, that's just not realistic as a solopreneur. I don't have the advertising budget. I don't have the, it's just, I'm not going to get to that point. It, it's going to take a long time and a lot of work and a lot of savvy. But if I can generate, say, 100 low ticket sales on the front end per month, 50 to 100, selling something for 5 to 10 bucks, and then a percentage of them, say 4 or 5%, buy something for a couple of thousand dollars, now all of a sudden, I've got a $5,000 a month business that is replacing the average income for an American in, in, in our country, right? In the country that you and I live in and for other countries, maybe even much higher, you know, and that was what really set the, 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 the light bulbs off for me and even made it even simpler to explain to people because it was like, look, if you can focus on delivering value to customers, if you're going to be an affiliate, focus on partnering with pro products that have value, or if you're going to create your own course, or coaching program, make sure that you're delivering value because that way you can charge for it. You can charge for it. You can charge a couple of thousand. You can charge 5,000, 10,000 bucks for it. And there's enough profit that you don't need to bring in hundreds of customers per month. You only, you could even eventually, if you wanted to build your own course or coaching program, have a staple flagship offer for 5,000 bucks and do two sales a month. It's a game changer when you think about it like that because it's 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 a it's like I can wrap my head around that. And also the other thing, I don't know if what your thoughts are on this or anything that I've said, Caleb, but I've found that selling higher ticket products to people is a the clientele who's willing to spend money are a lot more enjoyable to work with and to serve those people than somebody who is like a freebie seeker. The 99.9% .9 of all of the, nearly 100% of all the negative comments that you see anywhere in our community are either people who have never purchased our products or somebody who only spent $7. Yes. And they, and they, I'm telling you, 90 plus percent of our customer support tickets are from those people and nothing wrong, not here to shame you. We, we're, we try to be as inclusive as possible, but over a decade and, in this, and hopefully you guys, are, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it because maybe you need to raise your financial thermostat a little bit. And maybe you can do that by listening to this show on a daily basis. But think about that. It's like, do I want to serve the people who are going to be the most unappreciative in the most you, you know, kind of, kind of brash and rash with their like entitlement, you know? Um, or do I want to serve people who are willing to part with their money for a good quality, valuable, uh, training. And they understand that we're both humans and to that mutual respect is a must for us all to succeed. What comes up? You're laughing. You're feeling me. I can tell. What's <laughs> I, I want to say you? preach, preach Dave. Um, yeah. So here's here's my thought that comes up from that. Um, say with my take my TikTok account. Um, I watch other people, uh, other affiliate marketers, and I see um, when I started off, I saw how they were doing things, and maybe I mimicked it a little bit. But from the very beginning, I had that thought that you were just talking about. I want the high quality people coming to my funnel. 
Um, and I know my funnel is going to weed some of those out, hopefully. And I, but I also want to be that stopgap to those people like you're talking about that are looking to start something for free or for seven dollars only and think that they're going to build this empire. Um, because those people are, are going to make my life harder, one. And two, there's not going to be any kind of long term relationship there, I believe. Um, yeah. So when I see a lot of these accounts that are blowing up and that are that, that have all these people and all these negative comments underneath, um, that that's what that's attracting. And that's something that I've tried to steer away from. And, and what I know comes with that is I'm not going to blow up like some of these other people. My account's going to grow a little bit slower um, because I'm going to be engaging people that really want to get started and really want to work hard and have uh, the energy and the ability to, to put work into it. And I start yeah. a lot of my videos with saying, you're going to have to work at this. I have a nine to five. I work and, it, and it's really a lot more than that. Every and I tell people this all the time. Every time, every night when my family goes to sleep, my wife and kids, I go into my garage and I work from about 830 at night to sometimes 11 at night every night, five days a week. Are, are you willing to do something like that to get where you really want to be? Um, because me just saying, hey, you can make $10,000 a month. Uh, if you take this seven dollar course, um, that's going to attract some people. But what 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 are those people really willing to do? And um, a lot of people don't like hearing that. But I like being up front and I like being real with people and, and showing them my journey and what kind of work it takes. Um, and I'm not I'm, I haven't reached my pinnacle, but I'm working every night. And um, I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, you're wanting that the people that I've seen that have put the negative comments in my post, either, like you said, have not not tried anything or um, they're wanting something for free. And um, that that's my experience. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's it's it really is. I mean, it really is. It's kind of why, like for me, negative comments, even in within our community, because I mean, we have 10,000 new people taking our challenge every month. We're going to have, you know, a, we're going to have people who are going to, and sometimes I even wonder if it's just competitors. I look at their profile. They look yeah. like catfish, catfish people anyways, but yeah. you know, it, but either way, I mean that we, we humans exist out there. There are lots of us, hundreds of millions of us just in this country alone. And the majority of us are uh, financially, not just financially bankrupt, you know, physically in terms of our of our bank accounts, but we're financially bankrupt mentally, yeah. and uh, and and you know we have an entitlement, an attitude of entitlement. I know I did at one time in my life. I had an attitude of entitlement um, that you know I didn't, I didn't, I just was, I just, I had a lot to learn about what, how to get what I wanted in life, and it wasn't going about the things, the way that I was going about them. It wasn't going places and, you know, demanding things and being entitled and telling people what was wrong with them and what, you know, and, you know, it's kind of like the guy who knows a little bit about a lot of things, right? And you've always got an opinion about everything from the peanut gallery, never doing anything, never actually taking any risk, but has an opinion about how you should be doing your running your business, you know, do et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, I think you're right. And that's a good transition. How we, how, the chum, how the bait that we throw out there in, in the fishing formula, the chumming step is the content that we're putting out into the marketplace is the content that we're putting out, attracting in people who are actually going to buy, you know, I, I get these people sometimes who send me messages on Instagram and stuff. And they're like, you know, you know, I, I just want to know before I spend seven dollars. It's like, come, on. you know, you know, like, <laughs> like, what? really? It's like, come on, like, so in, I don't get a lot of them, right? Right. But I, I would imagine that people who who do the freebie marketing. The other day we had um, Colin from South Africa, and he was talking about. You know, he learned this big lesson about doing all the freebie marketing, like make five dollars per minute for free. And while that sort of what that style of content, if you're in the make money online space, anyways, does chum the waters up, it does get the frenzy going. 
right? But do they actually convert into sales and then actually want to spend money to invest in training? So your philosophy is that you want, you're okay taking your time. You want to put out good quality, authentic stuff. Talk us through your mindset a little bit about creating content and sort of how you approach that. Absolutely. Um, I think, um, and one thing I want to, I want, I want to give it people advice. If you've gone through the challenge and you become an affiliate, go, you go through the compliance and the thing that you talk about, those videos that are out there and the documents that are out there, that, that needs to be the first thing everybody does. And I know that y'all, y'all promote that. Um, because part of that, that I read that it stuck with me before I even started creating content was don't be that person that shows us screenshots of numbers, no matter what you're, what you're promoting. Um, and the reason you even talk about, you know, you've seen um, statistics and, and things that it doesn't really help you. You know, you're going to get this, that chum in the water like you're talking about. And all these people are going to get in a frenzy of like, oh, wow, I can make this. Look what he made this week. Um, but is that the person that you're wanting to attract? And um, I followed that from the very beginning. And like I said, my, my growth um, is, is a slow uptick, but I'm OK with that. Because if I have this drastic giant leap, um, you can also have this drastic giant fall off, in my opinion, yeah. uh, where yeah. these people just flee when uh, they don't do anything with what you're trying to talk about. Um, so that's just my personality anyway. Um, if somebody came up and asked me how much I made a year, I'm not going to tell them that. So why would I do that online? Yeah. Um, it's kind of my philosophy. Um, I know yeah. it's attractive and it's, it's the cool thing, fun thing to do. Uh, but it, it's really not going to get you where you want to be, in my opinion. Well, um, the games change too, dude. I mean, the games change. Like, what? It's it's just a different. It's a different ball game um, in terms of just the marketplace as well. The marketplace is more. It's more transparent. Um, it is being regulated more. Yeah. So, like, with each passing day, each passing month, each passing year platforms regulators all all these the the people who you know ultimately are sort of like the 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 internet police right because mm -hmm. even compliance departments for platforms they they have a police like a compliance department like we have a compliance department here as well to make sure that you know people are not doing stuff that is going to cause us problems you know right. regulatory issues etc but the thing to understand is is that that it's you know over time platforms like facebook they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and they've 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 gotten more heat from congress and government and in cryptocurrency and politicians as well as marketers have you know really uh, you know i mean just pushed it to the limit you know i mean even our own you know our own government candidates and presidents and past presidents have honestly screwed it up for a lot of us love them or hate them but yeah. they even pushed it to the limit right with fundraising cryptocurrency i mean like that 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 the whole cryptocurrency thing has pushed it to the limit to where they've just pulled way back so you know it's not it's not only that making flashing income claims in doing the flash and trash style marketing is 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 not a good long-term strategy it might be good short term but again the highs are highs the lows are lows right. get ready for that drop off but the problem is is that it 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 when when i say oh i just made thousand dollars today and then somebody gets started and you're selling them say a you know, you're in the make money online space and then they don't go do that. Yeah. Now all of a sudden your trust, the trust is broken, right? It's a scam. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scam. It's this, yeah. it's that, it, you know, right. the, the, it, it's a fake screenshot. It's Photoshop. <laughs> it's all this, right? So instead the philosophy that I've developed as I've matured over time is under promise, under mm -hmm. promise, under sell, right? Under like, keep it more real, but make the disclaimer that most people don't get any results are because they don't take action. Are do you want to take action? If you do, you got a chance. If you're going to buy it and not take action, you don't have a chance. So what happens is when somebody gets a result, now it's a big deal. It's like holy shit. Yeah. I you know I made a commission or I lost 
a couple of pounds with the help, the, the, the weight loss thing or whatever. Um, and I also don't risk, there's always a chance, but I don't risk getting my account shadow banned Absolutely. or blocked yep. or my, right. Yes. Cause that's another piece of this business that can be super frustrating is, and that's why nowadays copy and videos and headlines, I call it watered down. You have to water things down a little bit, not use your most aggressive headline, not use the most aggressive terminology and vocabulary because, because it's, it's heavily more heavily regulated. You know, Facebook, the ads manager, they don't give a shit about you. People right. are like, I got my account shut down. Like you're entitled, like it's a birthright nope. to have nope. a Facebook ads account. It's like you, you, you don't have a, anyways, I could get on a rant, but it's, <laughs> just, we're responsible for our own stuff, our, our, uh, staying in business, our keeping our accounts, stuff like that. Um, so what advice would you give to somebody who's brand new, Caleb, who's, who's, you know, trying to get things off the ground, who is certainly, is certainly, uh, fascinated in it and enamored with particularly TikTok and how fast it moves and yeah. how quick, you know, some people are growing. And then of course, comparisonitis kicks in and then, you know, people, there's a lot of head games that come along with this. So what is some of the, 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 the one or two pieces of advice that you would give somebody in who's, who's marketing in any niche that's getting started or wants to start over today? Absolutely. Um, TikTok it is it is a rough place to be because there are so many highs and lows, but it is a great place for free traffic. Um, and one of the things that you know, just the other day, um, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, somebody was I was doing a live and they said, "Hey, you are the most real person I've seen talking about affiliate marketing." And they said, "That's the reason I follow you, and that's the reason I'm sitting here listening to you right now because you're telling me." how it is. So my advice would be, be real. Don't try to put on this facade. Um, don't, don't make, don't try to chase these other people that are blowing up. Um, tell your story. And that's what people love. They want to hear something real that they can relate with. And um, she ended up, uh, she said, I'm signing up for the 15 day challenge right now. She said, I, and, and you know, that was such a cool feeling for me that I saw someone connect that way instead of seeing a screenshot or seeing some major claim that, um, that somebody's put out there. But I will say, um, TikTok is a great place to start. Um, you're going to have ups and downs. I've seen people start after I've started and their follower account is has blown up. Um, so that's that's tough to see because you do compare yourself. Um, but you need to see, you're, you want to see steady growth. Um, I have a OneNote, um, uh, you know, a notes that I use. I use them for work. I use OneNote for work, Microsoft OneNote. And what I do is I have they have little check boxes that you can put on things. So I have um, my funnel hits. I have my viewer count. I have uh, my blog post count yep. and I copy and paste that every week. And I have an amount that I'm going to do that week. And then I paste it to the next week and I see my growth. And that has helped me tremendously. And I'm not comparing myself to all these other people that are blowing up. I'm seeing yep. my numbers go up now. My phone hits might go up four times this week or they might go up 40 times. Um, but if you see that steady growth, you need to be looking uh, to a year from now instead of tomorrow. And that's how I've, you know, some people, it's hard for them because uh, they might need a, a paycheck today. And, th and that's a rough thing to deal with. I, obviously, yeah. I have a, a great career and a great job that I have in place right now. And I'm blessed to have that. Um, but just just look for steady growth. Otherwise, you're going to get discouraged and you're going to quit. Um, yeah. I told myself this time in this in this round of, of doing something online, I'm not quitting until I make it. Um, you know, I've seen people on here. There's a guy the other day that was, you know, my parents age. And, you know, you've got time to do this kind of stuff. And uh, as long as you plug away, um, you can do it. Um, you've got the tools. Um, you've got legendary marketer to help you. And um, it's there. The internet is the place to be right now. Um, just yeah. plug away at it and be consistent would be my best advice. Yeah, it's it's great advice. So you've seen some different things and you've seen also, you've seen some different things online. You've seen different things in the corporate world. Your brother's an attorney. I mean, you obviously have uh, some smart people in your family. You're a smart guy yourself. 
what's been your impression of us, of legendary, of our community? And, and I'm not trying to get a pat on the back here. Like I'm legitimately just wondering what your experience has been like with us and, uh, and the community here and, and so forth. Dave, I, I will tell you, I've, I've taken throughout all the business models that I've done. Um, I've taken many courses. I've paid, uh, more money than I've paid to legendary marketer for some courses that were half the, the, the course. And um, I will say uh, that is why I'm an affiliate for legendary marketer um, is the quality. Um, everything that I have in my life is quality. I, and, and I try to keep that up uh, with whatever I purchase in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I want the best if I can afford it and I can do it. Um, and that's why I'm an affiliate. That's why I wouldn't be promoting legendary. I did not believe that in my heart of hearts. And that's one of my criteria for any affiliate, anything that I'm an affiliate for. Um, I either have to use it or I have to believe in the product. And, yeah. um, you know, I've seen that in legendary in the community, like you're saying, it's amazing. Uh, the, the people that are, that you have staffed you yourself, um, the people that are in the Facebook groups, um, and even people that I've met on TikTok that are also affiliates for legendary. I've made friends just in, since December that mm -hmm. I don't have in real life that I'm closer with. I feel like, um, just in, you know, the com camaraderie that I have. Uh, with these type of people, um, I feel like Legendary Marketer attracts those people. And that's where I want to be. I want to be part of that. So it, it's been amazing. And um, it, it's top notch, in my opinion. You you said it. You said something right there that I think was, was I hope, I, I don't want to gloss over, which was, I like quality. I like the best things in life. If I can afford them, I buy them. And I think that 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 really is a big mindset shift and, and is a real eye opener. You, it was simply put, uh, but it's really a deep, a deep thought to think about because really society trains us to find the cheapest, the bargain, mm -hmm. what's on sale, quantity over quality, more, 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 right? I mean, a big meal versus something quality. I mean, even in our food, right? It's like, right. you know, you know, go to a buffet and get just sloppy <laughs> for seven ninety nine right. instead of a like a nice quality, good, healthy meal, and and pay a little bit more, and it's a smaller portion. I mean, even down to the food we eat. So, I um. I, I don't know if if you want to say anything more. I'm not particularly asking you to say anything more about that, but I just really thought that that was that was that's a that's a really cool thought. I mean, is that a philosophy that you have across all areas of your life that if you can afford it, you will go for the best, you will go for quality? Yes, sir, absolutely. And my namesake, my grandfather, Roy Roy Knott was his name. He was he worked for Dupont in Nashville for thirty something years and retired from there. He was a hardworking man. Didn't make a ton of money, but that was his philosophy. And I, 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 I took that and, mm. um, you know, he wouldn't buy a car until it was something, um, I, I think a Lincoln was what he always wanted. And he waited till he had that money and he <laughs> bought that Lincoln and man, that thing lasted him until he died, I believe. Yeah. And he was like that with everything. And yeah. my wife doesn't really understand it because last year I bought a brand new John Deere mower. And she was like, why can't you just get a, you know, some Troy built at a, you know, the hardware store. And I said, have you seen our neighbor's mower? He bought that thing last year and it sounds like it's about to die. And um, <laughs> I'm out here in my brand new uh, John Deere and she's shaking her head because I've, I've paid a pretty penny for it. But right. that thing's going to last me. I mean, my, my daughter's going to be mowing the grass with that thing. Yeah. And so I carry that on into other parts of my life it, it, as I can. And uh, I believe in that wholeheartedly. Is that a writer? No, it's uh, I mean, it's it was it's the top of the line, uh, just riding mower. Um, I didn't get the zero turn. Uh, I didn't. No, go but that is way. it a rider that you ride along? Yes, on, yes, yes. You spit yes, on. Okay, yes, wow, yeah. that's incredible. I grew yeah. up. I used to go and visit my aunt and uncle up in New York, and my uncle had a John Deere ride mm -hmm. mower, like that you rode on, and I, I thought it was the coolest. <laughs> thing man i would want the first thing i wanted to do when i got there was go and sit on that tractor yeah it's pretty mine is uh we have pretty big yards here in our neighborhood in tennessee we've got yeah. you know we've got a big chunk of land so i had to have yeah. one and i, I yeah. just wanted the best one so yeah yeah well that's a great place to go out also and just clear the head right it is. And just, 
you can't be bothered. The kids, the what nobody can bother you because it's like dad's mowing the lawn. But I mean, <laughs> it, you know, but it's really it's really a a peaceful thing. I I've the older I get, I like to kind of you know, mess around out in the yard and stuff. I would have never imagined that I'd be into that as a younger man, but you know, we, we, we grow old and we, we enjoy different things. Well, dude, great to chat. Hope you'll come back on the, your, your thought process, your approach is directly in line with me. Um, uh, (laughs) it took me longer to get there than you. I, maybe not. I mean, because you've been doing this for a long time, but I've evolved and matured into this sort of mindset of quality and, in, in, in the long game and it's paid off. So I just invite all of you guys who are listening to, to re-listen to this, follow Caleb. We've got his, uh, his, 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 uh, TikTok handle there, connect with him. I mean, you know, this is a guy who's, who's going to, who's going to lead you in the right direction and, and give you good feedback it versus just BS feedback. And I think good friends who tell us the truth, are hard to come by. So anybody who has you in their corners, a lucky person, I'll let you get back to, I know you've got a busy day, most likely Thanks, with all the things you're doing. And I appreciate your time, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. All right. See you, Caleb. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, that was a good, that was a good conversation. That was a quality conversation. Okay. Be legendary, my friends, get the hell out of here and go put quality over quantity today. That's my invitation. That's my challenge to you for today is think about that, right? Think about who you want to attract into your life. Think about what you want to spend your money and time on and that, you know, you can, you can pick your, your Q route. Do you want to go quantity? You know, do you want to just, do you want to just get the most bang for your buck? Right. I, I, I like that analogy of just going to that buffet and just, just getting just a stomach full of heartburn and, but you got your money's worth or, you know, something healthy, something maybe a little bit lighter, more quality, you know, put more days at the end of my life. Right. Maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe a little bit of delayed gratification because I know I'm investing in my future versus just just trying to get stuff today. Um, it's an interesting thought to think about for how you want to live your life and build your business. With that being said, all right, it's time to go. Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Wake up, legendary. Peace.